What's going on guys, it's UK Smite James and I'm back with another Groove DZ PvP build. This build we worked fine in a group but it's made for the Groove DZ PvP composition I posted a video on. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Without watching that video, half of what I say won't make sense, so if you haven't already, I'd give that a watch first. This is what I call the Marmite build, as you will either absolutely love or hate this build. The idea came from my friend Supreme Tracker and it's an absolute belter. This setup is focused on buffing the team in the form of frequent bonus armor. Bonus armor is very important in the current state of the game, due to Intimidate being incredibly strong. There are many sources of bonus armor, Ninja Bite knee pads, Bloodsucker, Adrenaline Rush, Protective Reload, Gunner Spec Armor Kit and so on, all of which are percentage buffs based on different values from total armor. I categorize them into buffs given to yourself and the buffs given to your team. It's much more efficient for your team's bonus armor source to come from a group member who buffs the whole group, rather than just using an Adrenaline Rush for yourself. Especially as the bonus armor support players have high base armor, so this buff is much higher. As for the build, we're sitting here at 2.1 million armor. With a build at first glance, it looks like you've randomly match made for a legendary with a level 34. However, the aim for this build is to squeeze the most amount of base armor as possible to give a stronger buff. The backpack we're using is a piece of R and K for the income repairs and the talent leadership. I overlooked this talent until Supreme Tracker made a build with it and was giving me stupid amounts of bonus armor. If you compare this to Perfect Vanguard, you give 5% less bonus armor, but the cooldown is halved, giving your team a much regular source of bonus armor. Most of the time when using this build, you'll be going from cover to cover directly at enemies. The specialization ties in with this talent here, as Firewall gives you an extra 30% bonus armor for yourself during a cover to cover move. With your total armor as high as this anyway, You'll be getting about 630k through this, which should really help you complete it near enemies without being bursted down. You could have 6 players shooting at you and you're still going to stay alive. Even if you manage to get through this stupid amount of armour, you have a 840k tardigrade bonus to fall back on. Now this is the time you'll be begging for extra heals. This is why it's called the Marmite build, as you either hate this style of play or find it refreshing and funny from going from cover to cover with four or five players shooting at you without dying. For the mask we've gone for the Night Watcher. Obviously a piece of Gilla garb is needed here for the armor buff. This name mask is so strong and unique compared to other items. However it's an extremely situational piece like not many builds would actually benefit from it. However due to not needing any crit as we're rarely shooting and not needing much Hasbro or armor regen as we have the skill support player it's a great piece to slot in. The player can just keep on pulsing enemies without being interrupted by the need to shoot. This is a great counter for decoys. As for the chest, we've got Tardigrade. Similar to Unbreakable, on Armor Break you get a backup bonus armor to the value of 800k. Now if you didn't know already, there's a bug that's been happening for a while now where Tardigrade and Unbreakable aren't proccing on Armor Break. This is due to you having armor regen spec onto your build. None of the builds in your squad need armor regen as it would be a waste of a stat with the healer and also could end up killing you if the Tardigrade stops proccing. Unfortunately the actual chest piece comes with armor regen so it can't be avoided on this build. As for the holster we've got one of two pieces of foundry simply to buff my eye total armor and therefore the bonus armor buffs for the team. I've rolled for Hasbro here as I may not be fighting near the team members with the tier 6 boost dive. As for the gloves, we've got a second, the second piece of foundry, also with has protection. The knees we've gone in for Emperor's Guard for the percentage-based armor region. A third piece of foundry would be similar, or a piece of bellstone. As you can see with this build and the others I've posted, the pieces aren't god rolled, but the builds are still extremely effective. All the builds I've posted in regards to the Group DZ PvP composition are very easily achievable in both farming and not needing god rolled pieces as the group synergy makes up for the poor rolls. You don't have to use these brand sets, you do fine with a mixture of Golem, Bellstone, Badger, maybe some Yarl, all depends on what pieces you have. The main thing being 6 Blues, Tardigrade and Leadership. Like I said before, if you want to play this game to PvP, you don't want to be spending all your time playing farming. When using this build, it's important to have a high sensitivity to help you find your next piece of cover with the show cover indicator switched on. I'm using the maximum field of view so I can see as much as possible of my surroundings. 
Yeah, I'm digging this playing this build, but it's incredibly fun and refreshing to switch up the style of play. Enjoy the gameplay and I'll catch you in the next one. Booster. Okay. One down. I need yeah, one down. One. Is this on our right one. flank as well, Mike? Mike? On no our right flank as well. No one down. Take that guy up. Okay. Down. 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 Got a shield. So right inside. Down away. Right. NPCs behind us. Right guys down as well. 
That guy's down. Oh god. Where's the mic? 